everyone, today I wanted to talk about the most commonly asked questions about watercolor or just some general tips that I feel like are very useful to beginners. With that, let's get into the 7 tips for watercolors. The most common question I get is how you don't see my strokes in my illustrations. The first tip is strokes and how to avoid them. This is a very simple and easy fix. Do not let your paint dry. As soon as you let your paint dry, it will create a wash, it will dry, and it will create this border where you can see the stroke. As long as you keep your paint wet, you can keep moving it and you can create a very smooth color surface. But as soon as you let it dry, you will see that border between where it dried before and where you are now applying wet paint. So the more water you add to your watercolor, the easier it is to not create that border where each stroke goes. Tip number two is paper. A lot of people ask me what kind of paper I use and I simply use watercolor paper. As long as you use specifically watercolor paper or mixed media paper, it should be able to handle the amount of water that you're putting on it. If you use something like a printer paper, it's going to buckle and it's going to fall apart. So make sure that you're using watercolor paper. Now, if you're wondering hot press versus cold press, Personally, I like cold pressed, but that's just because I actually really like the texture it adds. Hot press is a watercolor paper that is fairly smooth and it doesn't absorb the watercolor as quickly as cold press. So you're able to work with it a little bit longer, but like I said, it just comes down to personal preference. Make sure you try both and see which one you like more. Tip number three is storing your brushes. A lot of people have asked me why their brushes fall apart or why the bristles fall out. This could be because the quality isn't the best, but it could also be because of the way you're storing your brushes. You want to make sure that your brush is completely dry and you do this by letting it lay flat. Then you can store it upright. If you store it upright while it's still wet, the excess water can run down to where the glue holds the brussels together and it can cause it to loosen and the pieces will start to fall out of the brush. Tip number four is making gradients. The easiest way to make a gradient is to make sure your surface is at least a little bit wet. Making a dry gradient is possible, but it's not as easy as wetting your surface before doing it. If you put a little bit water on your paper, then add the color to it, then it makes a gradient a lot easier. Add the water, add your pigment, and an easy gradient is done. It also helps to make sure that your watercolor is very wet. You can create a thicker, drier color by adding a lot of pigment, but it's easier to make a gradient when your colors are watered down a lot more. This makes them a lot easier to work with and easier to control. Tip number five, mix enough paint. I think the biggest thing holding people back from mixing too much paint is that they don't want to waste their paint. They don't want to waste the money that they put into their paint. The core set that I'm using right now I got in December and I over mix drastically. I never want to run out of paint because you don't want to run into the position where you're coloring a big area and you have to remix your color. Not only is the color going to dry and create that border, but your color is not going to be 100% the same. Personally, I just feel like it's better to have too much paint than run out midway through. Tip number six is overworking your paper. If you rub too hard or too often on a piece of paper or just go over it too often, it will rub the paper raw and it will start to fall apart. Make sure you avoid this by using your brush lightly on the piece of paper and also only going over that piece if you really have to multiple times. Be gentle, paper does fall apart. And finally, tip number seven, which I think is a tip in every single video I make, have patience. Watercolor takes time to dry. And the more water you put onto the paper, the longer it's going to take to dry. If you try to paint a surface right next to a wet area, it is going to bleed into that. So you have to have the patience to let things dry. I'm an impatient person. I know how hard it is to have to wait for each section of each color to dry, but I try to strategically plan each color and paint sections that aren't touching in the meantime. Also, sometimes watercolor can be a little hard to learn, so have the patience to learn it. I think the results are definitely worth it. I hope you learned a thing or two about watercolor. The best advice I can give for you is to just practice and try new things with watercolor and see what works for you. 
Alright guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!